Photosynthesis review. First, let's just review the basic chemical reaction for photosynthesis. Plants are taking carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, and in the presence of light, which provides the energy, are combining those two simple molecules into a larger organic molecule, which we normally simplify just as glucose, and in the process giving off oxygen gas, which in their case is a waste product, a byproduct, but, but which is obviously very important for life on Earth. Uh, the overall photosynthesis can be broken down into two sets of reactions, the light-dependent or just light reactions, and the light independent, or the dark reactions. Okay, I, we will start with the light reactions. Okay, so this shows uh, an overall schematic of the light dependent, or light reactions of photosy photosynthesis. Uh, this side here represents the relative energy level of the electrons. So electrons which are down here are relatively low energy, and electrons which are shown up here are a little bit higher in energy. So, first thing that we have, uh, we obviously have sunlight coming down, and this gives energy, and the molecules, the chlorophyll molecules and other pigments are found within photosystems and the uh, first photosystem in, this, in the light reactions here is photosystem 2. When the photons are absorbed, uh, the energy is passed on to a couple electrons and those electrons are kicked out of the photosystem and are passed on to a series of proteins called the electron transport chain, or ETC. As the electrons travel along the ETC, uh, they lose a little bit of their energy, and that energy does not go to waste. It is captured by an ATP molecule. At the end of this first electron transport chain, uh, is the second photosystem, photosystem 1. And again, uh, same thing happens. Light energy comes down, strikes the pigment molecules. That excites some electrons. They get passed on to a second electron transport chain. The electrons are passed down. They lose their energy. And in this, uh, at the end of this electron transport chain, the molecule is NADPH. So these two molecules, ATP and NADPH, are the two high energy molecules which are produced during the light dependent reactions. And we will see those molecules again. Before we move on to the next set of reactions, I just want to go over a little bit of the location of the light reactions. Remember, this is all happening within a chloroplast. And all of these things we, which we talked about in the light reactions are all embedded here inside the thylakoid membrane. So remember, the thylakoids are the little disc shaped uh, membrane sacs inside the chloroplast. So this side here is the thylakoid space that's inside the thylakoid. And out here is the stroma, which is sort of the uh, interior, the fluid interior of the, the chloroplast. So photosystems are here, PS2 there, PS1. Uh, proteins of the electron transport chain are all embedded in the membrane and the electrons just kind of flow through. Uh, one thing that I did want to highlight here is how the ATP is actually formed and uh, this process is called chemiosmosis. 
Okay, and it, it it gets its energy from the gradient of hydrogen ions. As the electrons go down the electron transport chain, so they are losing energy, that energy is used to pump these hydrogen ions across the gradient. So there's very low concentration of hydrogen outside here in the stroma and very high concentration in the thylakoid space. And you can see all these hydrogens here. So that's going against the concentration gradient, so that obviously takes energy, and that energy is provided by these high-energy electrons. Over here, uh, this large enzyme uh, or protein in the membrane uh, is ATP synthase. Okay, I'm not going to write all that out. Um, what this does, it, it gives the hydrogen ions a channel to flow through. Okay, and now they are going from the thylakoid space back out to the stroma. So this is going from a high concentration to a low concentration. So that is down the gradient. So they are losing energy as the hydrogens flow out. And this enzyme, a, uh, ATP synthase, allows uh, that energy to be captured and we can we just get some of this out of the way we can take a, a low energy molecule of ADP adenosine diphosphate and convert it to a high energy molecule of ATP and that is the energy molecule of the cell okay, so this is a very important concept that this the energy for ATP production really comes directly from this hydrogen ion gradient. Very high inside the thylakoid and low out here, outside the thylakoid. Okay, moving on to the light independent or dark reactions of photosynthesis. Uh, this is also known as the Calvin-Benson cycle, or the C3 cycle. Uh, this kind, we can kind of look at this as three separate steps or stages of the Calvin cycle. Uh, first step here, carbon fixation. Fixation refers to the process of taking this small carbon molecule, CO2, here and fixing it, making it part of a larger molecule. So the carbon enters the cycle here in stage one, so now we have a slightly larger carbon molecule. Uh, it then goes into the second stage where we use up some energy, and here we see the ATP and NADPH molecules that were made during the light reactions. The end product of this stage is this molecule called G3P. Um, this is a three carbon sugar and this molecule is the actual product of the dark reactions. We can take two of these molecules, two of the three carbon molecules, and make our six carbon glucose that we highlighted at the beginning of the overall reaction. But just remember that this glucose is not the actual product of the Calvin cycle. It's actually this three carbon molecule. Okay, and then um, the last stage of the Calvin cycle is regenerating this first molecule, this uh, called RUBP, um, that makes it a true cycle as it goes around in a circle. And what we end up with at the end is the same thing that we had here at the beginning. So this just continues to cycle over and over again. The other uh, carbon fixation 
pathways, the C4 pathway, and the CAM pathway. Remember, those are, those evolved to help the plant conserve water. And they have to do with the fact that this enzyme right here will also put oxygen into the cycle. When oxygen enters the cycle, glucose is not made, uh, but the ATP and NADPH are still used up, so it's a very wasteful process. So be sure to look those alternate pathways over as well.